DJ, great to see you again. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you about today was Origins. Not just the show that we'll get to here coming up, but what did you think when NFL schedule came out and you saw the Jets opener was against San Francisco, the team that drafted you? I liked it. You know, I was excited, to be honest. Uh, I love playing against San Francisco. You know, what they built over there is really good. Like, they probably have, you know, one of the most talented rosters, if not probably the talented, the most talented roster. Um, they have a great coach in Kyle Shanahan. John Lynch is a great GM. So, you know, I love games like that, especially it's on a Monday night too, right? That's right. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to that game. But, but were you reflective at all in terms of, um, hey, man, that's the team that drafted me? Yeah, yeah, and no, uh, to be honest. Like, I would honestly be excited for anybody that we was playing, whether it was the Bills, Miami, um, even like another NFC West team, if it was the Seahawks or whatever, like, but no, I don't feel any type of like, oh, extra, like, you know, I'm excited just for the first game. How different are you as a player from the guy who walked out of Kansas State to now? I would just say just more technical, um, just more deliberate with like my steps, every step that I do on the field means something to me, um, not wasting a lot of wasted movement, everything being like intentful. I think that's the biggest difference. When San Francisco drafted you, the defensive coordinator was Robert Sala. Yeah. He told me, hey, listen, one of my big mistakes was I pegged this guy and said, here's his size, so he's going to be on the inside. How do they – initially use you do you remember those first ota practices with the 49ers yeah i remember them um i mean when they when i got drafted they pretty much called me and said you know we're gonna put you at free safety and then we're also gonna have you play nickel and i was on board with it uh, as far as like the prototypical stuff you know there's an evaluation there's a process with scouting you know a lot of coaches like guys at a certain length a certain height especially for a scheme like cover three um, so, I mean, it was definitely understandable at the time, but like you have exceptions. Um, like, obviously I was an exception. So, you know, it's, it's a normal thing for, you know, a coach or a scout, a scouting department to, you know, make that decision. So I understand that. But, you know, it was a little overwhelming my rookie year just with learning free safety. It, it, <laughs> it's a lot of, it, it's completely different than playing corner. Corner, you really just go out there. Do you play there. any safety in school? Um, no. Nah, so like before, yeah, before I got to uh, San Francisco, I didn't have any experience of playing safety other than high school. But like you're just really roaming. <laughs> right. But like as far as like the details and making all the calls and like being the, you know, the point guard of the defense, it, it was a lot for me. It was overwhelming. I remember uh, Jeff Halfley. He's a D.C. over at uh, Green Bay right now. Great dude. Yep. He was my positions coach. And like, man, he was really he really wanted me to like just be successful at safety. So like we would spend like hours, I'm talking about like, I'm still at the facility when everybody left and we still watching film. So it was just like, you know, just a lot your rookie year. Do you still view yourself as the exception? Because when you look around the National Football League, if you turn a game on, it's Sunday, it's Monday night, it's Thursday. There are not a lot of dudes like yourself who look like you playing on the outside. Yeah, I would say that I'm definitely an exception. I feel like, you know, the NFL is, is, is trendy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, for example, like when I came into the league, all the corners, you know, in San Francisco were pretty much six foot, other than Jimmy Ward at the time, but he played safety as well. But, like, most of the guys were six foot and above. Um, even when I got to Seattle, the corners there were six foot and above. You know, we had Dunbar. We had uh, Shaq Griff. We mm -hmm. had um, Trey Flowers. These guys are like 6'2 and plus. Um, so when I got there, obviously I got the chance to play because of injuries. And, you know, I did my thing or whatever. And then the next year they drafted Trey Brown, who was 5'9". And Trey Brown's a baller as well. He's still in Seattle. So I just think it's a, it's a trend. And you see one guy do it, then you think another guy could do it that did it in college. And then also receivers. Like you got Tyreek Hills, you got Waddles, you got – smaller type of receivers um, that give, you know, bigger guys problems. So you probably want to go smaller at corner to, you know, I guess keep up with the speed and the quickness. So I just think it's all trendy. Um, 
And then you had guys in the past like Calvin Johnson. So you probably want to have a bigger corner <laughs> guard him. So it's just, I just feel like it's just the NFL just goes in trends. Eps and flows. Eps and flows, exactly. How would you explain your two years here? I think this stage in New York has helped you. But I don't think people in the National Football League were sleeping on you. Like, we've had this conversation before. You thought that breakthrough happened for you actually in Seattle even before you came here. But how would you explain kind of your first two years here? Yeah, I think, you know, I've been playing at a high level uh, my first two years here. I think that, you know, I'm I'm really starting to notice how big, like, the New York media is. Yeah. I feel like my first year here, I didn't really grasp the understanding of that. Um, even with the comments I made last year about the 85 Bears, I didn't, under, <laughs> I didn't understand, like, when you say stuff like that, like, like those are headlines that, you know, the media and stuff is looking for. It's just something that I genuinely felt and I said it, but I didn't understand, like, what that stigma would cause. So, like, I just learned, like, you just got to be careful what you say, um, you know, to the media. Obviously, you still got to be your authentic self, but, like, you know, everyone here wants a headline. Yep. And you could use it as a positive thing as well. Like when you play well in New York, you know, people are going to know your name. People are going to blow you up. But it's also the vice versa effect. If you don't play well, you know, you're going to be the worst thing in the world. So it goes both ways. Um, but for me at corner, I know that, you know, there's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. And that comes with the game. But it's really just about focusing on myself. You're su such a thoughtful dude. And you also care about your teammates. When that reaction came back about the 85 Bears... How did you take it? Honestly, I didn't care because I knew like where my intentions were. Right. Like, I knew our defense was going to be good. I mean, I believe PFF graded us as the number one defense. I know that, you know, across the league that we were rated a top five defense. But I just felt like the statement that I made it basically just overrid, you know, the success that we had last year on defense because it was always, a, oh, we're, it wasn't the 85 Bears or – if we didn't have one great game as a defensive unit, it's like, oh, the 85 Bears. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you see stuff like that. So, you know, you just live and you learn. Like, it is what it is, to be honest. I got to imagine no players talked about that on the field no. when, when you're competing against them. No, hey, could you ever care. imagine, though, if I told you when you signed your free agency deal here, and you landed with the Jets that it was going to be, you're going to be paired up with Sauce Gardner and Michael Carter. Yeah. Man, you could have never imagined that. No, I couldn't. I didn't expect it to be how it is, to be honest. I knew we were going to be good, but to this extent, I didn't know how good we could be. But I do know that, you know, every day, like, I go out with those guys. Like, we work hard at practice, and it shows in the game. We definitely developed a standard, and... Yeah, it's known across the league that we're considered the best CB trio. But it's a testament to how those guys work. Like, they really put in the work every day. And it's just a – we just continue to just want to grow, for real, for real. Like, we just want to get better every day, and that's going to lead to success on Sundays. How do you as a professional compartmentalize? Because it's funny, they were just asking you downstairs, hey, hey DJ – it's your three-year contract, you know? You can sign a three-year deal. How do you go about just approaching every day, keeping the main thing the main thing, and letting the future take care of itself? Yeah, you know, I, I consider this job a day-to-day -day job. Like, you can't really look too far out. I feel like if you look too far out, then you can miss the present. And, you know, things, I don't think good things can happen if you do that, in my opinion. Um, for me, I'm just comfortable as far as, like, with what I signed. Um, coming here um, financially I'm in a great place uh, my family's happy you know I was able to like buy my mom a home um, buy myself a home you know that was really like coming into the league what I really wanted to do um, financially like I said I'm in a great place um, and my family's happy so for me playing my third and final year is like I signed a three year deal so I intend to play those three years out what's the luxury you just talked about sauce in MC2, what's the luxury of having you guys back there as far as communication and the way you guys work together? And also, you guys can play non-traditional coverages. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing some really cool things this year um, as far as the defense. I won't get into, like, details or everything. Right. But I will say, like, Sauce and MC, 
they are talented as far as covering and being able to cover guys, but they're really smart. And I don't think people understand that. But if you start watching tape and you start seeing like the success of certain plays, it's, it really comes down to film study and just anticipation of what we already watched um, with what our coaches showed us during the week. Um, I would say like, we're very smart. Um, I think that goes a long way, especially, you know, during a long season, your body gets worn down. But to still be able to play at a high level, like when your body is sore because of the long season is a testament to like how they do treatment, how they watch film, et cetera, et cetera. Can you speak to that? How everybody's got to be on a string, so to yeah. speak? Because we've looked at plays in the past as far as, hey, you guys might be in some combination coverages, or you might be in some zone coverages and passing guys off. Yeah. You have to be on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, it'd be funny because, like, you see, like, some things on social media and it's like, oh, that's his fault or that's... Right. And quite honestly, they have no idea what we're playing. <laughs> um, and that's okay. Like, they're fans or whatever. They're, they're, they're not supposed to know. But um, we definitely have some complex coverages that requires a lot of talking, a lot of communicating, especially with motions and things that the offense does. So, like, yeah, it, it definitely comes with that. Isn't it funny? Do you smile when you hear some of those things? Because I think with Salah's defense and they say, well, he's coming from San Francisco, and then you go back to the days in Seattle where he started with Pete and stuff like that. Um, hey, you know, they're just running zone back there. It's a, it's a, a simplified uh, coverage system when you guys look at some of those things that you guys are doing where – it, yeah. It's very complex, and there's combinations going on. And on top of it, you do have the ability on third down to say, you know what, we're manning up across the board because all you guys can man up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, our defense, I would say, is simple to an extent. I feel like offenses are always changing, therefore our defense is always changing because if you just run the same things and offenses are going to game plan and, you know, have – I've give you a lot of problems. Like they're going to get to like what we call, you know, coverage beaters. They're going to make it really hard because they know what we're in. So you have to adjust as well. Um, that just comes with the game. And then, yeah, like don't get it twisted. Like we play all this zone and stuff, but like when it gets real, we play man and right. we have the guys to be able to get that job done as well. How patient did it have to be the last couple of years? Because oftentimes you guys weren't scoring a lot of points. So that means in the back end where – I can look at you guys and watch the film and say, these dudes are they're playing their ass off. You're not getting the takeaways because it's late in the game. Yeah. It's the third and fourth quarter, and maybe you guys yeah. are just coming down and playing the wrong. No, for sure. Um, you know, that's how it's been the last two years. And, you know, as a team, you just have to, you know, basically deal with what you're dealt. You got to just figure it out and just, you know, you can't really complain about it. Um, but I will say that, you know, I'm excited about this year. I will say that. And, you know, when we are up, you know, on the scoreboard, there will be more opportunities. And I'm looking forward to capitalizing on those opportunities when they come. Yeah. You got to be chomping at the pit, right? Yeah. Because number one is Aaron Rodgers coming back. Number two is you look at the defensive line, Ed, Hassan <laughs> Reddick to the yeah. equation. You got the big stud in the middle with Quinn and Williams. You got Jermaine, who made this monster jump last year. Like, if this goes the way it's supposed to, yeah, yeah. You, you guys are going to have the opportunities to make those plays that you want to. Oh, yeah, I was looking at our D-line the last couple of days. Like, Ken Law, too. Can't forget about Ken Law. He's a big dude, huh? Yeah, he, he's a big dude. And we got... Reddick, man, he's I've been watching him for a while now and man, he's just you could just tell like he he really like it's an art. Like when you watch him pass rush, it looks like it looks like an artist. Like it's not just him. Like he he's really strategic and I love that. Like I'm a hooper, so like I like watching Kyrie Irving. Right. And he's real technical. Like I really like like he, he seems like he has that, like he's really technical with his pass rushing. And you know, his production shows that. So I'm definitely looking forward to him. Same as Jermaine. Um like you said, he had a big leap in year two. So just with the D-line, same with Ken Law. Like, I know he's working hard this offseason. So, like, yeah, I'm definitely, you know, excited about our D-line. And obviously Q, Q's the man. It's the reason why he commands, you know, all the double mm -hmm. teams every game. It's a reason for that. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to, you know, getting those takeaways this year. You're a competitor. Uh, I know you enjoy playing against them, but what kind of stress does Rodgers put on a defense just practicing against them? Man, he changes everything. Like, I was just telling the reporters in there, like, when you're going against AR, everybody around him seems better. Yep. The receivers feel better. The tight ends feel better. The running back feels better. It just seems like everybody ups their game more. Um, obviously, AR is a Hall of Fame quarterback for a reason. As far as his, his arm talent is second to none, in my opinion. Like, Even now? Even now. Second to none, in my opinion. As far as like deep ball accuracy and all that, the no looks, it's crazy. Obviously, that's important, but I think the mind, like the mindset is more important. Like he knows the looks, he knows what coverage we're in, and he's going to get to what he wants to get to. If you make a play on it, you make a play on it, but he's going to get to the weakness of the coverage, which a lot of quarterbacks are not really good at doing that. He yeah. understands like what we're in. Like if we communicate something, he knows like, oh, this is that. So we're going to get to this. He, he could change the play at the line of scrimmage. He does things that I've never seen a quarterback do. <laughs> so what do you do in that situation where you know he's getting out? <laughs> yeah. And it's right prior to a snap. You just got to play football. You just yeah. got to do your job at the end of the day. But it makes it tough for sure, especially the no-look passing. When you're playing zone, you're thinking he's looking this way and he's throwing to the opposite side. It, it affects the safeties. It affects people when when you when you're throwing no look passes, like it, it, that's just different for real. For real. <laughs> that's what I was gonna <laughs> ask you about the no look yeah. passes and you guys being in zone because for a lot of dudes, even at this level, you can watch the eyes and you're gonna get some keys. Exactly. Where I gotta think sometimes if you're watching Aaron's eyes, it's not helping you at all. Actually, it's nah, gonna. It, I be telling the safeties like, don't just stay on your landmark, bro. <laughs> like, don't don't look at his eyes, bro, because he his eyes is gonna deceive you, bro. Yeah, don't do that. Sauce is his athleticism underrated, not by you guys, but maybe out there externally because I I think. People can get lost in the sauce by saying, yeah, he's a big dude. He he just takes care of it because he's lanky. You know, like his athleticism nah, yeah. is just. Yeah, I agree. He's athletic, though. Like like the way he moves is quick, not fair not for, for a, a dude guy. who's that big, right? I agree. Like he's he's he moves like he's like 5'9". Like yeah. He moves like a little guy, the way he could like stop on a dime. The COD and then the flip of the hips, the turn? Yeah, like. He just he just moves real fluidly to be that tall. To be honest, um, it, it's very different. Um, as well as like his long arms, like at the catch point, like it's hard to catch a pass on him. Like even if he's beat by a little bit, and he sticks his arms out, he's great at like the time. Like when the receiver has to catch the ball, he's great at getting the ball out. Like I think that's what one of the things that he does best. Like I watched his film from last year. And I was just seeing, like, I just wanted to see what he does great, just yeah. watching all his cut-ups or his target tape. And at the catch point, I think that I think he's the best um, at cornerback at the catch point. Like, when the ball's in the air, getting the ball out, he's, like, elite at that. His timing. His it's timing, punching the pocket, getting his arm in there to get the ball out, PBU, ball disruption, he's the best in the league at. Do you see receivers? I mean, you're taking care of business on your side. But do you see receivers get frustrated playing against him? To your point, you see sometimes where receivers get their hands on the ball with sauce. But then he's there and he's able to punch it out and get it right there, maybe at the it's the top of somebody's jump. Or, or the timing's good and then also the physicality. Do you see the frustration from the receivers? <laughs> I definitely see. When we play teams, I definitely see receivers getting frustrated at him because they're frustrated by their production. Yeah. I definitely see that. Um, do you guys talk about interceptions? For sure. Amongst we, yourselves? Yeah. Do you like, have, like, internal yeah, competition? Sure. Because... For sure, like, we definitely, like, that's the most important thing is to get the ball back to your offense. So we definitely, like, even though we played well last year, we definitely want to get the ball. But, you know, it goes overall as a team. Like like I, like you said, like, when you're up in the score scoreboard, like, when we look at teams like Dallas, right? Dallas is usually in the league. So, like, the corners there, they get, you know, they get opportunities. Teams got to throw the ball. 
And, you know, they get opportunities. Like, yeah. I'm just keeping it real. Like, and, you know, they're great players, don't get me wrong. But just the opportunities is just a little different. Like, if we're not in the league, then teams are going to be conservative because they don't have to score. They have the league. They're just going to play conservative football. So that's that's just what comes with it. How have dudes over time changed the way they approach playing you, like the receivers? Because when you come out, you're a late round pick. You're working your way into this game, whether you're getting trained up as a free safety or a nickel. It's a lot different than now where everybody in the league knows that DJ Reed is one of the best cornerbacks that we got out here. Yeah, I think it's – um you got to know who you're playing. Like, when you when you study teams, you know, some teams don't care who you are. They're going to try. But then there's also other teams where you see, like, you're not getting targets. So, like, they just have that type of respect. They're not even going to try it. So you just got to really know who you're playing. Um, you got to know really, like, who the OC is. Like, I always talk about, like, knowing the players is cool, but, like, knowing the offensive coordinator. Like, does he want to try stuff or is he not going to try stuff, vice versa? So it's really like knowing who the offensive coordinator is. Is it the same thing with the quarterback too? Where quarterbacks too, for sure. Because right. like, you know, you got quarterbacks. Some quarterbacks don't care who you are. Like Stafford, I was just telling somebody like Stafford, I've seen like, bro, you get an interception on Stafford and he's going to come right back at you the next drive. Interesting. And certain quarterbacks, if you get a pick, then they're going to more you than likely what? leave you alone. So like, it just depends who the quarterback is too. But that's the beauty of it with you guys too, is you can't stay away from everybody. But you are arguably, in my mind, and you said it as well, the best trio in football. But they can't say, oh, okay, we're no, not coming at to. any one of you. They have to attack. No, I agree. They definitely have to. So <laughs> Come to me. Give me some targets. I love Give it, Give me man. the targets. I'm just I, playing. I, I love it. All right, so we got some exciting news on the production front. We are our internal – production crew, feature crew, is doing a big piece on you. Origins, DJ Reed. Can you talk about them going back and what the storytelling is going to be involved there? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, it's raw. It's uncut. It's authentic. Um, you know, I did a couple things on the Niners. So I had a story, but I just felt like it was like very like vanilla. Mm -hmm. But this is like the realness of like my story and my truth. And I told them that, you know, I wanted to film that way. I didn't want it like vanilla. Like I wanted to show like the struggles that I went through in life from a childhood to coming up to get to this point. And I wanted to make, make it pretty much a non-filter just to give somebody hope that's going through a similar situation as me. And even if you're not going through something similar, just motivation. Um, and just to let them know, like, if I could do it, then, you know, you could do it. Um, that was really, like, my main objecti objective for it. All right, so preview it for us, though, because they went back to California. You grew up in California. Yeah. You got a story here where after high school, you were going to Fresno. And yeah. Then you ended up going to junior college. Then you ended up going to Kansas So you, you, want me to, you want me to explain, like, this? Yeah. Well, I wanna... Okay, okay. I thought y'all wanted to, like, you know what I'm saying, keep it a little secret. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, yeah, we, so... maybe we tease it. I got you. So we went back to high school. Many people don't know, you know, I got arrested in high school. So I was 16. I got arrested actually with my little brother and a couple of friends at the time. And, you know, that really changed my life, really impacted my life. You know, during that time, um, I was a point guard for Independence High School. We had a great team. We went 33-2 and two that year. Um, I had to actually miss the playoffs because of um, me getting in trouble. And I had to watch it. And I had to serve time in juvenile hall. And, you know, for me, it was something that really changed my life because God just made it clear to me that, you know, you can either go this way or this way. And, you know, I'm from Bakersfield. You know, a lot of guys get in trouble and they end up, you know, going in and out of jail, working in the oil fields, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's very rare that, you know, guys have been able to get out. You know, now we have a couple guys in the league, but... During that time, that, that really wasn't a thing. Uh, so for me, it was about, you know, making my mom proud. I didn't want to ever, like, make my mom feel like she didn't raise me the right way. And I want to be a great example for my uh, little brother who I got in trouble with. So it was just a, a wake-up call for me. Um, that was the first time that I really developed a relationship with God. Um, when I was in there, I was actually reading the Bible, and I actually I always believed in God, but that 
going through that, I actually had a relationship with God. I actually felt the Holy Spirit. I actually felt God working in me. And he gave me a sense of peace during that time. And I just locked in. Like my senior year, ended up winning MVP in basketball and football. Was the first player to do that. Um, had schools, talking to schools. A lot of schools were kind of afraid of the situation that happened. So I didn't end up getting any offers. So that's when I walked on to Fresno State. Um, we didn't document going to Fresno State. We actually documented um, when I went to JUCO. Right. So they talked to Coach Keynes. They talked to Coach Grossfield. Um, so that was a cool experience. I talked to the guys there. And yeah, that was pretty much like the main the main story. We also talked about my pops as well, how he impacted my life. Um, you get to see my mom. We go to Bakersfield. You get to see my mom. Um, she's as real as it gets, in my opinion. She raised me like she raised me the right way, and. Yeah, man, she shares her story, her testimony as well. And she's a, you know, she's probably the main reason why I'm here. If she wasn't, you know, if she didn't impact my life the way she did, I definitely wouldn't be here. So I'm I'm forever grateful for my mom. So what do you think about being in this position right now to the, to be able to retell that as a guy who's not only an accomplished professional, who's not only one of the best defensive backs in football, but now you're married. You got a couple kids. You got one on the way. One on the way. One on the one way. One and one on the way. Yes. You got a beautiful Sweet. daughter, one on the way. I mean, how does that make you feel? Man, it's a blessing, bro. Like, that's why I'm always grateful. I'm always smiling because it's just, like, how I'm living now is just crazy. Like, obviously, I still work hard. I still put in the work. But, like, this is just gravy on the top for me. Like, this is my job to play football still at 27 years old. So, like, I'm just forever grateful. Go home, be a family man. That was really all I ever wanted in life was, you know, to have a successful career in whatever I'm doing. But most importantly, be a great family man. Uh, raise kids in a, in a friendly environment. And yeah, just be a great husband as well. That's really all. I, like, I'm, I'm really a simple person when it comes to that. Uh, so I'm living out basically the dreams that I, I set out to achieve. But you got to give yourself a lot of credit. Because 16, you could have went one way. Yeah. But that showed a lot of maturity to take that kind of situation, that kind of adversity that you self admittedly put yourself in and said, you know what? I got to take a different direction. Yeah, man. I just felt like I, I knew I had, I knew I was talented. Like I knew God gave me gifts um, from an athletic standpoint, of course, but I just feel like my mindset was always. You know, I'm going to get out of Bakersfield. I'm going to do something positive for my city and for my family, most importantly. And I knew, like, that situation didn't show that. I remember how people looked at me, like, when I went to school, how teachers, how students was, like, treating me. And it was just like, man, this isn't it, bro. This isn't it. So, like, I just made it a, I made a decision, basically, when I got in trouble. Like, <laughs> we're going to go this way, and we're going to see where the, where the stars fall or whatever. Whatever the, whatever the saying is. That, that's Origins, DJ Reed. We're all looking forward to that coming out. Uh, what's the plans for you this summer? We're going back home to Calabasas, man. Yeah. We're going back home. It's going to be with the fam, just training, getting ready for training camp. You're going to chill. Okay. And then uh, lastly, you were talking about hoops before. Any you thoughts on what's going on right now? I mean, listen, I'm not gonna this, lie, the man. NBA finals might be over by the time this airs, but I wanted to get your thoughts on the overall, maybe the postseason, where we are, NBA landscape right can now. I, can I keep it real, bro? Yeah, man, keep, keep it real. Let's roll. Celtics have the best team. Me personally, I want Dallas to win because I'm a Kyrie guy. Yeah. But to be real with you, man, you know, Injuries and stuff happen. I just feel like the way that the Celtics got to it, which they can't control that, just with Giannis getting hurt, yep. just the injuries, Jimmy Butler, it's just a lot. They had a yeah, bro. They had a lot of fortune <laughs> going their way, which I'm not taking anything from them. But I would have loved to see the superstars that should have been playing play. I was hoping Minnesota that's would it. be in the finals. Yeah, that's Knicks, it. Knicks I did wanted, their thing too. I wanted Minnesota. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I wanted Anthony Edwards in Minnesota. Yeah. Carl Anthony, I wanted them to, to really win it. But I, I was happy for Kyrie because I love Kyrie. Yeah. And I like Luka's game as well. Um, but I don't I don't know if they have they, – they're not coming with the firepower and stardom that 
that yeah. the Celtics so, have. But that, that's where I wanted to end. Is it's that like, who, yeah. whose game it's like, do you relate to most? DJ Reed, going back in the day. You said you were a point guard. <laughs> Who 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 oh, would be man. a guy in the pros right now? Like that's most like my game. I'm not gonna toot my horn, bro. Come on, give us something. I wasn't. I I was nice, but I'm not NBA nice. Like, uh, but, I, but but but, I, but I your like style. Say, I'm saying your style. Okay, like, my style. I would say like. <laughs> that's a good question. I would say, prime Chris Paul. Prime, oh really? Prime Chris Paul, because I was getting my teammates, I was getting assists, but I can't, what? I can't get buckets though too. Don't get it twisted. I, you know what I mean? I cross, get yeah. my buckets, shoot threes, all that. But you had a mid range game yes. then. If you're Chris, you tell me Chris Paul. Yes, yes, I had all that. But I would like to say Kyrie just for his yo yo. Yeah. But Kyrie was is is a pure scorer. Like Kyrie could play shooting guard too, so I wouldn't go that far. But like I would say Chris Paul, and yeah. then defense too. Chris Paul was getting hella steals back then too. Yeah. Kyrie off the bounce, it's incredible. Kyrie, I remember I watched the Brooklyn. We went to a playoff game last year. Was it last year? It was when he was in Brooklyn. I don't know if it was last year or my first year here, but I was watching him, bro. And it was just crazy. Like it, the way he dribbled, bro, he really got the ball on the stream. Bro. I know. He only had 20 that game, but it was just how he was scoring. Yeah. It was just so technical, bro. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's just amazing, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> DJ Reed, a man of many talents. Great seeing you. Enjoy the summer. Appreciate that, bro. You too.